How many need some direction? Amen. How many uh, are at a uh, proverbial fork in the road? Uh, if I stay, it's going to be trouble. But if I go, it might be double. Should I stay or should I go? You need direction. But the scriptures say in the presence of the Lord that he would show us the path of life. Hallelujah. That means we know which way to go. The scriptures say all the goings of a man are of the Lord. How could we then possibly understand our own way? That means our footsteps have to be ordered by the Lord. Now, he's not going to take the step for us, but he will lead and guide and show the way. We have to put one foot in front of the other. And the Lord was mentioning a little bit this morning uh, in a Bible study. And we were looking at the uh, book of Numbers that uh, decisions, decisions, decisions. God's not going to make a decision for you. But what he does is he persuades you to the point that it's really not a difficult choice. However, you we have an adversary that likes to complicate things. Yeah. And some of you need to be careful about what's in your ear. Uh, uh, uh. Some of you need to be careful about what's in your ear. Mm -hmm. Now, you used to watch the old cartoons and uh, Tom or Jerry were about to make a decision. They could either go left or they could go right. They could stand still or they could make a move forward or backwards. But they had a decision to make. And usually with your decisions, there are uh, ramifications or implications or there's what they call cause and effect. You, you make this decision, then you get this result. You make another decision, you get another result. Another scenario unfolds. Uh, something is played out. And uh, when they go to make the decision, sometimes there would be a what? An angel on one side, and there would be a, uh, a devil on the other side. And the angel and devil weren't really doing anything. They weren't pushing and shoving. They were what? Suggesting. Wow. In the ear of the individual, because the devil couldn't make them do anything. And God Almighty, whom nothing is impossible for him, he couldn't do anything. Because he said, I'm not going to impose. Some of you are in the valley of decision. And you think God's going to make the decision for you. He's not. Wow. But he will make it plain and he will make it clear. And now you have to take the step. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Some, some, for some of you to step into your destiny, it's time for some of you to step into your promised land. They had to uh, march around the walls of Jericho seven times. They had to be quiet for a certain amount of days. And then they had to open up their mouths and praise the Lord. Yeah. And then some things happened. Some things happened. They didn't have to bring out their chisels, their bulldozers, and their diamond tip drills to get through the uh, tall giant walls of Jericho. All they had to do was what? Open up their mouths and obey God and follow his leading. No, I don't want you to praise me on the sixth day. I don't want you to praise me on the fifth day. I want you to keep what? Quiet. Because I want you to have all the muster and all this strength. See, some of you, hallelujah, there is an appointed praise. Hallelujah. It's an appointed what? Time. So you like to, so you sometimes you can't let it out. Don't let the cat out the bag too early. Come on now. The cat might get away from you. Uh, but you got to sometimes some things, hallelujah, God will say, uh, don't tell anybody. Even Jesus. He did awesome things, but he was like, don't tell anybody. You know, you'll get me crucified before my what? Time. <laughs> There's some people I have to heal. There's some uh, relationships that I have to reconcile. There's some uh, uh, people that, hungry people that I have to feed. There's some thirsty souls that I have to quench. Don't say anything yet. Some of you are in the midst of making a decision and you're opening up your mouths and you're, I don't know who this is for, and you're talking and you're letting the cat out of the bag and you're being influenced and you wonder why you've been sitting on this thing for so long. Because when, this is God speaking. Because when he's about to work it all out, you let it out and mess the timing up. <coughs> See, I remember uh, a big shift. I, I, I remember a transition in the word. And guys, if you remember, you got to remember. By faith, I was there. 
Hallelujah. And there was going to be a double uh, a blessing coming on somebody. A double blessing. They had served, they had waited. But up and see, when you're in a period of serving and waiting, you guess what you're doing? Serving and waiting. See, I would have fainted unless I had believed that one day, at some point in time, I was going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Then the psalmist says, wait, I say, on the Lord. Keep waiting. But waiting means what? Like a waiter or a waitress. They are a server. And all that means is they're giving their attention to the one uh, uh, that they've humbled themselves to. Whatever you say, I'm going to do. Whatever you want, I'm going to do my best to give it to you. Somebody say, wait on the what? Lord. So the Lord is asking for some things. He's expecting some things. He has requested some things. Hallelujah. Thou has known what the Lord requires. Hallelujah. He requires mercy and not what? Sacrifice. He requires, hallelujah, forgiveness. He requires what? Equity. There's a certain number of things that he requires that we walk humbly with our God. And he says there's some things that we ought to know, but he's asked what we have to wait on him. And he said we have to be of good Curse, because while you're waiting, hallelujah, and while you're serving, you are waiting and serving. And see, see, here's the thing. See, you ever been out? And I don't know. I'm a, uh, well, uh, I'll keep my mouth shut. But sometimes when you're out and you're eating and having a nice meal, you can sense the anxiety of the waiter or the server or the waitress. And maybe because they think, maybe because they hue your skin, right. and or maybe they think because of maybe what you're wearing, and maybe and it's just a prejudgment. It's a presumption. They don't know you. That's right. Hallelujah! I tell you, when I, when I walk into place, they fight. Man, you hear all the dishes in the back. People be like, "Well, I quit," because they want me to sit in their section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went somewhere with my daughter the other day. My daughter Zoe. She was like, "It's like you just started. You just put this on your rotation." Uh -oh, you, you just started coming here. They know you already. I said, they might not know me. They not know my face. But they know they're getting 20 plus percent. And that's all they need to what? No. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's all they need to know. See, but sometimes in the midst. Oh, boy. In the midst of serving. And in the midst of waiting. In the midst of serving. And in the midst of waiting. Yeah. Sometimes there can be anxiety because you're not really sure if there will be a reward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, son. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're not careful, you begin to judge things by covers. Mm -hmm. You begin to judge things by past experience. And sometimes that can influence your present experience that you will begin to mistreat or change the way you act based upon what you fear as opposed to what's really happening. My God. Now, once again, God is a just God. Yes, he is. Everybody can rip you off. But if you deal fairly with people, God will pay you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Double. That's why he said you don't have to worry about it. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, therefore, don't stop serving and don't stop waiting. With a good heart, with a sound mind, with an expectation that there shall be a reward. Because anyone that comes to God must know that I'm giving you the definition of faith. See, we like to make it all theological. We like to make it all magical. We like to put our religious bells on it. But faith is simply serving God no matter what. No matter how you feel, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, and no matter what the little crazy dodo birds that are whispering in your ear are saying. See, because you can't tell me uh, how good God is. Because you weren't there, Hollywood, when God was there. And you're not going to be there down the road because you're going to be over in the corner hating because you're going to see the goodness of God. And I'm going to be his spokesperson and his poster child. Yes, But it's serving, it's focusing, it's concentrating. Yeah. Wait, I say, therefore. Turn to Psalm 27. Yeah. This is not where I want to go, but it's all right. We're here, amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. God knows what we need yes. to hear, amen? Yes. God sent his word, and his word healed us. Yeah. 
and delivered us from destruction. You know the wrong influence get around you? You let it mess up your happy relationship? Then you look up and the one that was giving you all that advice about leaving is moving in. <laughs> oh, it's been known to what? Happen. And you got talked out of a what? Good thing. Messing around, talking to what? A dumb thing. Oh, y'all, uh, y'all, okay, <laughs> all right, come on, wow. listen to somebody that doesn't know anything about anything, no evidence, no proof, no fruit, come on now, a tree is known by its fruit, you don't want to listen to someone, you don't even want to listen to someone that's just doing what you're doing, don't you want to be doing better than what you're doing, you want to go to the next level, so you got to talk to someone that's on the what, on the next level, Someone has exceeded where you are. Because the God that we serve, that's where he's calling us to. Something that exceeds what we ask for. Wow. Something that's gone beyond where we've ever been or even imagined that we could be. He wants to give us something, hallelujah, that we've never had before. So you're trying to maintain. God is trying to take you to a whole nother stratosphere. God's trying to move you into a whole nother level, but even better than that, another dimension. Wow. See, when you shift into another dimension, you're still there, but you ain't there. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You're the same person, but everything has changed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And that's where God is trying to... Yeah. See, but see, the world doesn't know how that operates. All the world knows how to manipulate and shed a crocodile uh, tear and push and shove. See, but God, hallelujah, forgives and gives. And God, hallelujah, the people of God turn the other cheek. Hallelujah. The people of God, see, now, what is what? Go back to somebody say, vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. This is the careful thing because you create anxiety and experience it while you're waiting. Now, I know nobody's waiting on anything. I know nobody believes that there's another dimension that they can go to. There's another level they can go to. But uh, you need a little bit of what? Hell. Because you don't know how to get there. Hallelujah. But yeah, God, and the only reason you're even thinking about it, it guess what? That's the thing. Why are you worried when God's the one that told you he was taking you there? But now you want to try to fulfill the prophecy. You're not fulfilling the prophecy. Faithful is he who calls, who also what? Shall do it. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to have to follow the steps. You're going to have to follow the lead. But he's going to make it very clear as to what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. But you got to remember something about God. He's a God of timing, not time. He is not worried about what your Rolex says. He's not worried about what your digital clock says. He's not worried about, hallelujah, what's going on around you. He knows, hallelujah, how to make all things beautiful. Yeah. Somebody say all things. All, all things. things. Beautiful. Beautiful. In his own time. Yeah. He said to the point, you won't know where it, where it started and how it, he said, how in the world did this marvelous thing occur? When Jesus was on the cross, they said they were uh, rolling dice and they were, they were really interested, not in our Lord and Savior, and uh, uh, the plan of salvation being worked out right before their eyes. He had some clothes on. And uh, uh, that's okay. They, you know, they father forgive them for what? They didn't know what they were doing. But they did see that he had this robe. And it says the robe was what? Seamless. And when you have a seamless garment... It's very interesting, and it's and and uh, uh, what makes it of great price is you you just don't know how it all came together. My wife will tell you if I get a jacket like like, like a leather jacket, the first I look at it, I say Ooh, I say I like it because there's what there's what no seams. See when you when you take a whole bunch of things and just throw them together, then it's a piece of this and it's a piece of that, and usually it's what cheaper. That's right, sir. And it's what? Easier. And it requires less what? Skill and ability. But when you get a seamless garment, you see it with carpet sometimes. If you, you, can, you can get really expensive carpet for a not so bad a price if you what? Have more, more seams. But the more seams you have, the more likely it's going to what? And rip or tear or come apart. But initially it's Cheaper. Mm -hmm. mm. So you can get on your own time schedule. Mm -hmm. You can force and manipulate and make things happen. Or, hallelujah, you can wait on the Lord. Yeah. And be of good courage. 
and let him do what? Strengthen thine heart. Maybe they won't leave you with him. Maybe who you were good to won't be good to you. Maybe the person that you remembered and never will forget has forgotten you. And it's a funny thing. Forget me. That's fine. Don't remember me. That's fine. But don't lose your cotton picking mind and start saying I was bad wow. and speaking evil on me and I've been nothing but good to you. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Now, someone say, I wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Now, you might wait, sir, and then you expect this and it doesn't come that way. Somebody say, but it's still coming. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, now here's the point. See, because God don't care about the tip. God don't really care about the service. God don't care about how long you waited. God can take the hands of time and throw them back so fast you won't know what hit you. A number of you have, have entered into, uh, uh, I don't know what you call these, uh, time lapses. Yeah. Have you ever been driving and then you look up and you're somewhere? Yeah. And you'd be like, you'd be like, I know I didn't travel for 40 miles. You'd be like, I know. You'd be like, you'd be like, you'd be like, you'd be like, you'd be like so all the time? <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> we need a bottle of what you got. <laughs> but occasionally, occasionally, you'll have a moment where you... And you're like, well, how did I get? And you won't know where the time went, went, and it seemed like something was accelerated, or something was held back. Or you look at the clock, right? you look at the clock, and it'll be like 11:44. Then you go through all this stuff, you look up, and it'll be 11:45, and you'd be like, I know it's been an hour of thought. I know it's been like three hours of thought. But you what? You slipped into another place. Wow. And see, God is trying to put you into another place. Yes. Where time, see, see, anyone here patient and don't raise people, because people are scared of patience. Mm -hmm. When it's not really, see, that's not good theology. Mm -hmm. How many have told, let me say, don't pray for patience, because then you're going to what? Wait. You're going to have to wait, you're going to what? Get it. Uh -huh. Be careful what you pray for, because you just might get what you ask for. Mm -hmm. What's the Lord say about patience? We have day. what? Need of patience. Yes. It says, ye, <laughs> us. We have need of patience. But then, somebody's preaching to you, somebody's in your ear saying, you don't have to wait. I told you about that time. I was going out. It was 6.45. And my mom said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to a Christmas party. I was on, I was on, I was on Christmas break. And um, I, um, <laughs> uh, Twin Chronicles. <laughs> the other twin, like, look, he laughing. He like, ha ha, he's boring. He like, ha ha, he's like, he's like, crazy. <laughs> Best of dad if you want. <laughs> I'm going to be the good twin for now. <laughs> then, he, then he said, when I act up, I'm going to say it was the other one. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I remember I was going out. Somebody said, wait. Wait. And, and see, wait means, means attend to. It doesn't mean just stand still and do nothing. And when you're waiting, the best thing to do is what? Get something to do. That's what? Worthwhile. Yes. I told you my whole life, when I was waiting on to change, I didn't like the way my life, I just didn't like the way it was. It was weird. I wasn't accustomed to it. It wasn't the way I had grown up. It wasn't who I was. My good days had outweighed my bad days, but I was having some strange days. I wasn't accustomed to strange days. I wasn't accustomed to normal okay days. I was accustomed to uh, uh, um, uh, ever increasing and what do you say, from glory to glory to glory. I was used to just increasing this on the incline. That's what I was accustomed to. That's what had always happened. Then there seemed to be less a law and a standstill. So I, I, you know, I tried to do what I used to do, but that didn't work. I wasn't getting any response. Mm -hmm. So then just out of default, I just began... <laughs> to wait on the Lord because he was the only one that was paying attention to me. I began to talk to God because no one else wanted to talk to me. I began to walk with God because I had no one else to walk with. And those were the best days of my life. They changed 
the course of my life. And I began to wait on the what? Lord. And guess what happened? He began to show me things to yeah. come. He began to strengthen my what? heart that was discouraged that was uh, could have entered into a depression that could have entered into a dark place that could have entered into oh i messed up and i'll never be able to what get up and get back on track somebody said the devil is a liar god is what able yes that's why he chewed everyone that god used was a little squirrely now this isn't advocation to be squirrely Squirrely enough as it is, amen? <laughs> but, uh, you know, God used some people that, you know, all three of God's major, 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 major uh, prophets and kings and, you know, people that are really, like, like, outstanding in the Bible that we refer to commonly, they had a major rap sheet. Mm -hmm. Moses was on Egypt's most what? Wanted. wanted. What's that guy on America's most wanted? The guy that started it? John Walsh. John Walsh, thank you. Can you imagine John Walsh up there? Yeah. This guy was out working. Said he was some deliverer. He's a member of a cult. Somebody was pushing somebody, somebody, and then hit him over the head. Buried the body in the sand. Has anybody seen Moses? <laughs> he was like, he just most wanted. He had to run. Because he what? Killed somebody. Yeah. King David, as glorious and wonderful as he was, not only did he kill somebody, he killed somebody that was what? Innocent. He killed someone. You know why he killed him? Because the person was good. And he was so good that the person wouldn't do wrong. The person was so honorable that he wouldn't act in any uh, dishonorable way. So the only thing he could do was what? Kill him. Because he had gotten his wife pregnant. And guess what book we're turned to? The book of Psalms. Guess who wrote it? The murder. The adulterer. Somebody say, wait. Wait. On the Lord. On the Lord. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. He shall. He shall. Strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, why do you think he has to tell you to wait again? Because he knows as soon as he says it, something jumps on your yeah, shoulder, yeah. something crawls up in your flesh, something comes across the television screen, something pops up on Instagram, something goes across the Twitter feed, and all of a sudden, impulse. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. Bless you, Lord. That impetuous nature. That what? Impetuous nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That what? Impetuous. You know what that means? Impetuous. Just jump out. Spontaneous. Don't think first. Just uh, full steam what? Ahead. Not knowing. Not having proper direction. <laughs> Hallelujah. Impulse. Just poof. How many think of a moment when they should have waited? Oh, too many, huh? And I told you I was going out. Hallelujah. Uh, everyone have Psalm 27? All the Lord's saying is, wait on me. On me. Because what do you know now? You're waiting on something. But he's just saying, wait on the right what? Thing. Concentrate. Focus on me. Listen to me. Stop taking directions from people and from things that are misdirecting you. And take directions from the one that's leading you and guiding you into all truth. The, the one that answers your prayer. Yes. 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 The one that when I ask something of you, it's really for you. Mm. Now think about that. What if you went somewhere and you had to attend to someone, their wish was your command, but everything that they were requesting and asking was for what? You. My God. <laughs> That's 
the kind of God we serve. Because what he's asking, hallelujah, he's going to turn right back and say, this was all for you. My God. When God says no, it's because he has a better yes. When God says wait, he has a better opportunity. And he doesn't want you committed and locked into anything that you are going to later uh, regret. So what's going on? Somebody say, wait. Wait. Somebody say, can't you just wait? Can't you just wait? Somebody say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I gotta wait. I gotta wait. Sure, sure, sure. I just go here, so I just see some person. I don't wait for anything. I just go. Who's who's ever felt entitled to run a light? <laughs> no, don't raise your hand on camera. Because <laughs> some of y'all are like, what? <laughs> you felt entitled. And someone, someone, someone said, yeah. Somebody stand right in front of the, the uh, traffic court judge. I mean, I was late for work. <laughs> now, you could have gone to bed on time. Hello? You could have done a number of things, but you were late for work, but you felt what? Entitled. There's certain stop signs. You don't stop. Ain't no one ever here. I'm familiar. See, don't get too familiar with the word of God that you think you can just zoom past things. Don't get too cute. You just zoom past prayer. Don't get so cute that when a fast is called, that you just zoom to right to the refrigerator. Then make up your own rules. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about time lapses, right? <laughs> oh, it was over on Tuesday. Oh, oh, did you check after you eat? Oh, it's what's oh Lord forgive me, you know my heart. <laughs> so I'm going out. My mom says, go back in the house. You're not going out. I said, why, mom? I said, this, this, you know, I'm on Christmas break and I'm on school tomorrow. And plus, it's the annual Christmas party. I went last year. She said, no, get back in the house. But she didn't have a natural answer. <laughs> but she sent something and saw something in the, in the spirit. spirit. Yeah. Somebody say, hold up. Hold up. Somebody say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And sometimes, it, I mean, it looks like a good deal. Sometimes it looks like a great opportunity. Sometimes even great people will tell you it's a great opportunity. And man, you have to know that still small voice for your own good. Yes. And for your own well-being. My God. And for your own self. Yes. And you said the past, but then, you know, I talked my way, weaseled my way out of it. Went on. So I'm in the car. And we had some wine coolers. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Was it Rocky Mountain White wine coolers? Is that what they were? <laughs> so we're going somewhere. Because I'm glad Bella has it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm in the car. Tom was in. Tom was driving. Oh, wow. Tom was driving his GTO. He had this red GTO muscle car. The cruise. I mean, you couldn't. I mean, you put the foot on the gas pedal, the whole car was. <laughs> I mean, the thing was just so strong. So we're going down, and uh, the Wolf and Den Twins were in the car, and both, and my friend Matt Schaefer was in the car, and so we're about to go to the place. So I'm like, all right, we got the Marco, and like, so I open it, and they're like, we're saying, wait. Huh? I'm like, what do I gotta wait for? Look, it's Christmas break, whatever I was saying. They were like, wait. <laughs> Next thing I know, <laughs> now, I think the cop pulls over because he wanted to see this GTO. But when he pulls over and looked in the car, he smelled what? Alcohol. Smell what? Alcohol. And then he did a simple breath test. He made everyone get out of the car. And guess who smelled like alcohol? <laughs> The one that wouldn't what? Wait. Even the rockhead, knucklehead kid said what? Wait, wait, wait. That's how you know. 
And some of you right now got someone who always gives bad advice. They're telling you the truth and you still don't want to wait. That's bad. That's when the rocks cry out. My God. My God. They'll cry out every now and then. Yes. And tell you. When I was in, Tom got in trouble for transporting alcohol underage. Mm. And I got in trouble for having it on my breath. Well, I was like Bill Clinton. I didn't, I didn't uh, ingest it. I just gargled with it. It's fighting a sore throat. <laughs> but I remember those words. What? Wait. But I felt entitled that I didn't have to what? Wait. I didn't have to listen to anybody. These are my peers. I didn't have to listen to anybody. I'm on vacation. I don't have to listen to anybody. Everything's going fine. I don't have to listen to anybody. Hmm. I felt entitled. Do what I wanted to do. And not take heed to the direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who's in the valley of decision. And some of you have been there. You know it's an important decision. You know it's a life-changing decision. You know it concerns the very fabric of your being. You know you only have but so many days upon this earth, even if you have 40. 40 years can go by quickly. Yeah. And some of you are and all God's saying is, I need you. See, I, see back in the day, anyone know what a shut-in is? Mm -hmm. yes. Anybody know what a prayer closet is? Yes. Is a prayer closet a closet? No. <laughs> now it might be for some. Prayer closet might be for some. Because, you know, back in the day, it was five generations in a 400-square-foot house. Mm -hmm. And everybody did just fine mm -hmm. with half a bathroom. Yeah, half a bathroom. Everybody did fine. Right. I told you, I went to my aunt uh, Beverly's house. She pulled out a turkey pan, a black turkey pan with the speckles on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we're having turkey. I said, it's not even Thanksgiving. Next thing I know, my clothes was off, and I was in the pan in the kitchen sink. I was like, what in the world? Y'all gonna put me, put me in the oven? I know what was going on. But she washed me up in the sink in a, yes. in a pan. Amen. I didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes maybe you do have to go in a closet. <laughs> but <laughs> the reason why you would go in a prayer closet is because you don't want any what? Distractions. You don't want any outside influences getting in your ear and uh, mixing the message that you're receiving. Impressing upon you in a way in which you can't hear what? Clearly. Even some familiar things. You, you understand? There are some familiar things. Just... Uh, colors, fabrics, uh, fragrances um, that, man, will really, like, take you to another place where you, you become deaf, dumb, and blind. Yes. Some of you hear a song now. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> lordy, 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 lordy. You hear a song and what? Well, you be like, what? Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? <laughs> See, I done lost you now. Tell me, like, Jesus, who? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, come on now. Just a smell. Just certain terminology. Phraseology. Mm. So you have to be careful. So sometimes you do have to go into the what? Closet. Proverbial or actual. Or literal. And the reason why you're in there is you can't really see. You can't really move around too much. So then you're what? Focused. And you wait. 
And then you what? Wait, so we're talking about shutting in. And then you what? You wait. See, a lot of people fast, Mother White. A lot of people even pray, Mother White. You know what they do? They got the TV on. They got text messages coming. They got people running in and out. Back in the day when people used to shut in, what did they do? Pray. They prayed. And what did they do? What about their surroundings? Everybody together on one Well, sometimes, but they would do what? They would lock the door, but sometimes they would, guess what they would do? They would get a what? They what? Get on their knees. Get on their knees. Now, those are all the things. We know what the people do. They what? Get away. They would get away from everyone and everything. Yes, sir. Even those that they love. Do you remember Jesus? He loved, he chose his disciples. He had some in it, but he would get up early in the morning while everybody was sleeping, and he would what? Get away. If Jesus, the Son of God, had to get away, what do you think we have to do? Mm. Now, don't you think Jesus could hear his heavenly Father, mm -hmm. whom he always obeyed and been with throughout eternity and was sent by him to accomplish great things, who was slain for God? When he was in the flesh, in this world, where there is trouble, where there are uh, outside influences, where there are things that are vying and trying to get our attention and trying to really get us off course, mm -hmm. if he had this steal away. If he had to pull away, if he had to shut himself in, what do you think we have to do? And some of you, I'm telling you, you're at the valley of, uh, you're in the valley of decision, but you're at this why, you know, why, yeah, and it comes up as why. <laughs> why, 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 why? And God is like, because, 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 but you're not hearing it. The Lord said, I need you to wait on me. I need you to pay attention to what I'm saying to you. The writing's always on the wall. The answer's always in the center of the problem. God is such a good God. I know when I give tests to my students, I always put key trigger words all around the questions that I'm asking. If I give them a fill in the blank where there's no multiple choice, where they don't have a true or false, or uh, you know, four choices where they have to really um, depend on their ability to retrieve information, I'll put a keyword in front or a keyword right after. And a good test taker will always look for the answer on the what? Page. It's either in the question or before the question or after the question. I'll put in something tr just to trigger it. The actual fill in the blank, I'll put it there. And God does that too. Bless you, Lord. It's always the answer right, right there. But so we don't hear it. Saints. Let's read Psalm 27. We're done. We're done. How many hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Amen. Lord knows I wanted to. I told my wife what I was going to talk about this morning. But I also told her a while back it's much easier to say what God's saying than to pull out my little lesson. <laughs> Talking about Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> and her fleece was white as snow. Mm -hmm. Wherever Mary went, the lamb seemed to go. <laughs> it ain't going to cut it, amen? <laughs> when you're in the valley of decision, it ain't going to cut it. When things are up in your ear, and they're, man, they sometimes get in the what? Best of you. Even though it's bringing out the what? Worst of you. Just be talking. And be talking. Be fine. Let alone an image be attached to it. Let alone, then, then you start imagining, then you start laying your own scenario out. You just roll, and you roll, and you, 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 you. know what your mind, see your mind, somebody say, my mind, my mind is, is a terrible, a terrible thing. thing. It's a waste. It's a waste. You should be envisioning all these good things, but you're just thinking like, no, cast that down. Bring that thing into captivity. Every single fault. I can let some through. No, every single thought that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. You have to get every. How many have fears? Not over there. Anyone ever been afraid? Just fear. You'd be like, oh my God. You're like, oh my God, what if? Oh my God, oh my God. You gotta cast that thing down. But it's like, don't fear anything but what? Fear itself. Fear is terrible. Fear is terrible. You don't want to walk. God did not give you a spirit. So don't receive it. 
God didn't give you a spirit of fear, don't receive it. Don't take that thing. That's not for you. Because fear is, what is it, false evidence appearing real. But really, fear is the opposite. It's a perverse faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Fear is the assurance of things you hope don't happen. But you think are going to what? Happen. It's the same thing. Neither happen. The good or the bad, but now you expect the bad, so you start seeing what? Bad. Because you feared it. But it sounds like, oh, my worst fears came upon me. Because you were acting on them. Mm -hmm. You let them simmer in your mind. Jesus. No, you got to change the what? Change. Hey, that's why I don't watch scary movies. That's mm -hmm. right. Life can be scary enough yeah. <laughs> without me adding anything what? To it. And what's the thing about a scary movie? You, you, know, you watch a scary movie, oh, it's fake. Right? You turn it off, and then you're sitting in the bed, and then you hear a noise, and then what happens? <laughs> Now you hear, then what happens? It's just a noise. It could be shepherd mother pulling up to give you a gift. But you think it's Freddy. You think somebody's coming in to run in, run up in your crib. Like you, you just, oh, because you, you started, and then you used your what? Mind. Yes. Then you started, all you heard was a noise. Mm -hmm. But then you added this whole scenario to it. Mm -hmm. yes. But it came because you allowed a foundation of fear to be laid. I still don't understand about the news. Even the news started having little things. Uh, they say, you know, don't. They, they, I heard a guy say on the news the other day, he said, yeah, uh, everybody in the world isn't bad. I'm like, I'm like, well, according to you guys, they are. That's right. People that sign your check, they got you talking a whole lot of stuff. So much happening is good news. Yes. yes. Just speak all this good news. Is it good morning, America? What's so good about the okay? Oh, good morning, America. Sorry. Right. <laughs> trivia. Amen. Good news. Hallelujah. Salvation is what? Good news. Poor? You don't got to be poor anymore. Sick? You don't have to be infirmed anymore. Lonely? You don't have to be alone anymore. I told you I was lonelier than a dog about to be euthanized in a pet shelter. My I was God. done. Mm -hmm. But I believed. Mm -hmm. But I what? Believe. I believed. I told you my parents I used to walk past their room and they used to be like, God, if you're really up there, if you exist, can you help my son? They used to shake their head. There's a scripture in the Psalms that says, people look at me and, they, and it says my skin, they see my skin and bones and they just, they just, you know, mm. poor little person. But in the midst of all that, hallelujah, I wasn't running the prayer stop sign. Mm. I wasn't running the witnessing stop sign. Mm. I wasn't running the tithing stop sign. Mm -hmm. I wasn't running honor my mother and father stop sign. Mm -hmm. And you know what? God was waiting on his what? Timing. Bless you, Lord. I didn't have to move to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank God for that. Amen. First lady started coming around. Mm -hmm. You could see like a girl on a track. She didn't know what was going on. She was on a tractor beam. She was like this. <laughs> and, and you could look at her and be like, she don't know why she's here. Mm -hmm. Somebody said it was time. It was time. What if I left in Atlanta? I probably would go in Atlanta, whatever. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I ain't going to Atlanta. <laughs> but anyway, no offense to Atlanta. <laughs> but you can wait on the Lord right where you what? Oh. Right where you are. Right where you what? Are. Saints, God's a God of time. Let him do it. Let him do it. And stop. It's just, 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 just the word. Stop. It's not, you know that. You know that. Everybody here knows that. That God's a God of timing and God's faithful. I think everybody here knows that. What I hear, the, the impression is, stop listening to outside voices and influences that are not of God. That's people. Just, just, just because someone's your friend, doesn't mean they know God. That's fine. Just because someone says they're a Christian, 
doesn't mean they're speaking forth the words of Christ. Come on, saints. Amen. Don't be deceived. Peter said, Jesus, you're the Christ. And the next word, he said, you don't got to go to the cross. Yes. He said that in the same breath. The same chapter. You got to know the voice for yourself. You know what God told you to do. You know what's expected and required of you. You know. You know what God's saying? Some of you are being pushed a little bit and influenced a little too much. Wait. Like the three wise men told me on the back of the GTO. Wait. My shepherd mother told me before I even got in the GTO. Just chill. You don't have to go everywhere. You don't have to do everything everyone else is doing. Just be, even if you did it or can do it. Because right? I remember being like, what do I have to wait for? Who are you guys? Hello. Everyone has to stand. Psalm 27. Stand. We're done. Hallelujah. Cut off those outside influence and the voices, and they are woo, they are opportunistic. They don't come when you're up and when you're encouraged, and you can easily pluck them away. You just had a knockout, drag out, bad day, bad experience, bad conversation, and then you bump into them. Yes. Hey, how you doing? <laughs>